It's true. Um, as soon as you face that fear, um, and you're going to run into this thing called the terror barrier, right? The closer you get to actually achieving your goal that you've been wanting to achieve, the more things are going to fight you, the more you're going to doubt yourself, the more uh, you're going to bring trouble into your life because the, what is that? That is your ego now fighting you, trying to keep you in this comfortable little spot. Hello and welcome to Around Town US, the show about entrepreneurs doing wonderful things all around the country and how you too can build a thriving business and live out your own dream instead of being paid to build someone else's. I'm your host, Adam Stoltz, owner of Digital Consulting LLC, a company focused on video marketing and content creation for your business, making your complex video projects simple. If you like what you see and hear today, please be sure to subscribe, like, share, leave a five-star rating. You can also donate to our cause right on our homepage at aroundtowncc.com. We can't thank you enough in advance for your support. My guest today has been snowboarding in five separate continents skiing in four different continents and has scuba dived and skydived on five different continents all around the world, living the dream life that he has chosen business coach and investor and my brother, Dave Stoltz. Dave, what's up, buddy? <laughs> Been a long time trying to get you here. Yes, it has. I finally got you though, back in uh, from LA and uh, real quick, congratulations on the recent marriage. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> um, so this is going to be a fun episode for all of you listening today. This is going to be a growth and mindset episode, which is uh, what Dave specializes in. Um, so without further ado, Dave, how did you achieve all of your success by, by facing your fears? And, and where is that going to lead us today? Well, the only way to actually achieve, achieve success is facing your own fears, whether they're manufactured on your own or there's a trauma in the past, you have to work through them and get through them to uh, the other side because everything you want is on the other side of fear. Uh, my personal fear that, um, that I struggled with was flying. And before we get into that, I want everybody to realize that we're actually born with two fears. The fear of loud noises and the fear of falling. Those are two primal fears that we are actually born with. And um, the fear of falling was a very real one for me because that's what created my fear of flying. But I didn't know that at the time. Right. So I, uh, I developed this fear of flying. Um, after a couple flights, it was really, it made no sense why. I had developed this fear of flying, but I did. And after probably about five or six flights, I, I didn't fly anymore. And I didn't know why, but I was like terrified to fly. And this kind of goes to show how strong the mind is in the way it constructs uh, fears in unrealistic expectations and ideas in, um, in, in our life. So I didn't have any bad flights. Um, nothing was weird while I was flying. I'm definitely not uh, claustrophobic. Um, you know, then there was this whole idea of, well, maybe it's control and it wasn't that. And it took quite a while of me working on myself and like learning about the aviation industry, uh, learning about uh, flying itself and everything that went into it and how safe it actually is. And yeah it just took a while to figure out what my real fear was. And I thought I had it figured out and I got back on a plane and uh, flew out to Los Angeles, saw some friends, came back. I was like, wow, I did it, you know? And, um, that was, uh, still not the core of what it was that was affecting my fear of flying. And it wasn't until I actually did a skydive that, I realized what that real fear was. So I met up with some friends. Um, we, and, and I did my first skydive. I was terrified. And when we left the plane, the, the whole concept of, of skydiving is when you leave the plane, you, you, you watch it go away. It kind of helps orient yourself in space and time when you're in free fall. So 
uh, my, my friend that was my instructor said, all right, I'll watch the plane as we leave. And of course, you know, being a silly instructor that he is, he's like one, two, he's like, we're going to leave on three. And of course that two, we're, <laughs> you're two, you're already out. We're out the door and the plane's <laughs> gone away. I'm like, what in the hell is happening? Um, but in that split second of leaving the plane and watching the plane go away as we're free falling, I realized in that split second that the real fear was falling. So it was one of those primal fears that was so integrated in me that I didn't, I didn't realize it. And I realized it in that moment. I was like, that was the fear. Which, which I mean, just, it just seems crazy to me because a side note, I mean, you skateboarded, you've mountain biked, and now I know you're not falling from thousands of feet when doing that, but you <laughs> exactly. fell plenty of times, I'm sure, skateboarding and mountain biking yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, I even had dreams of falling into like this black abyss as a kid all the time. It terrified me. So hmm. it's very, very strange um, how our minds operate and the way they work and, and how powerful they are in a negative context and a positive uh, context. So facing that fear kind of unknown, but head on, um, opened my world up. It was like somebody cracked open the world for me to experience it the way the world should be experienced during that skydive experience. Right. And of course, as soon as we landed, I was like, I want to go do this again, <laughs> you know, and, uh, 270 skydives later now and seven wingsuit flights. Um, wow you know, the, the level of confidence that you, uh, attain doing something like that in, in move in moving through life, knowing that you can handle a primal fear or you've recognized your primal fear, um, really allows you to be more free and take more risk in life to, to get to where you want to go. And, um, and just really reap the benefits of, uh, of abundance that's out there. Well, cause that's what I was going to ask you. How, how did, how did realizing that fear and facing it translate into financial freedom and, um, you know, just letting all the, I guess the way to put it, your old life go and, and realize that you were this whole new person. Uh, that's an interesting question. And, and I, have come up with this little thing that I, I tell people when I coach them that are, are facing fears or are fearful of moving into business or taking a risk. I, I ask myself, will this kill me? That's <laughs> the first question I ask myself. Okay. Will this kill me? If the answer is yes, well, I need to do some investigation to mitigate that risk of actually being killed. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if the answer is no, well, what do I have to lose? Right. And the answer is very little, quite honestly. When we when we really boil it down, the answer of what we have to lose is not a lot. If you're not losing your life, then you know it. You can handle it. Yeah, it, it, it's very very simple. Um, and I actually, you know, this is a little uh, side note, but I've actually been pulled out of a river unconscious and resuscitated and kayaking. Yeah, I almost that almost happened to me when I went out with you one time. <laughs> um, there is a thing the the white light that they talk about when people have near death experiences or death experiences and come back. That white light is real, um, but it's a very serene experience on the other side of terror. So I've kind of faced two very major um, kind of opponents, if you will in life that a lot of people struggle with. You know, a lot of people are afraid of death. Um, we're all headed there. You can't be afraid of that. Yeah. And of course my fear of falling. So, um, I, I really encourage people to, to dig deep inside themselves and really look on a subconscious level if they can, or if they're aware enough, you know, what are these primal fears? What are these fears? coming from? What are they stemming from that are holding you back? Um, but to kind of get back to your question is when you realize that there's nothing really to lose, you can just go for it. Yeah. And you know, you look at, you look at Gates, you look at, uh, you know, Warren Buffett, you look at, uh, uh, Musk, Bezos, yeah, and Musk, Bezos, any of those guys, how many people are telling them, no, this can't be done. 
Yeah. Everybody. Everybody. And what are they doing? Whatever they want. Well, and I heard Gary Vee the other day talk too. He's like, I'm going to tell you exactly what to do to grow your business and live the life you want. And he's like, but what's going to happen is you're going to go home and that one person you care most about hearing from is going to tell you it can't be done and you'll just forget everything I said. <laughs> exactly. And, and that is so on point and so true. I see that with clients that I deal with. Uh, I see it in friends. I see extremely talented people wasting their talents and not giving them to the world, uh, which devalues the world, which ultimately yep. devalues their life experience and, you know, a little foreshadowing uh, their abundance uh, wealth creation. Yeah. 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 Well, and, you know, not only that, it's, it's so many people, I think, I, I like how Jim Carrey put it. So many people live a life of fear disguised as practicality. Mm hmm. Right. So many people would rather go work the job they hate, do the daily grind as opposed just to appease their friends, make other people, other people's expectations of them come to fruition as opposed to stepping out on a ledge and just doing whatever the hell it is they want to do. Yeah. And, and, and there's the fear of, um, uh, what's the word? Um, the fear of abandonment, right? Yeah. From the tribe, right? The social tribe. Um, the reason people stick to those types of behaviors is they don't want to be abandoned from the social tribe. They don't want to be the outcast um, of the tribe, so to speak, because being abandoned by the tribe is, is almost worse than dying because you're not accepted by anyone. So we play these social games uh, to appease other people or appease the tribe, if you will. And it does not allow us to really grow into who we are as, um, as individuals and express ourselves as individuals because a tribe can't handle anything outside of its collective consciousness. Yeah. And if it is something that is outside of its collective consciousness, it, it shuns it. It's afraid of it. It doesn't know because nobody's gone there before. But what's funny about that is typically the person that doesn't mind being shunned by the tribe, when they reach that success, they're the very person the whole entire tribe is jealous of. Exactly. So, you know, and because this is one thing I had to learn from you as well. There's also a thing such as fear of success. Absolutely. Because success means responsibility. It means accountability. And so uh, you had to show me for a long time that I was so close to getting everything I wanted and I would just sabotage it because it scared the crap out of me to have to actually show up then and be present. And so, you know, if, if all of you listening out there haven't heard that concept, uh, a lot, it could serve a lot of you very good. You know, if you want something, don't be afraid to get it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the fear of success is, is a massive, um, problem that I encounter with clients as well. Uh, because like you said, you have responsibility now and look at who are the most free people in the world that can do whatever they want and have the greatest experiences, right? It's those guys that are taking many of which we just mentioned, those gentlemen, um, and ladies, and they're taking massive amounts of responsibility but they're also the freest people. They can go do whatever they want. They can hop on a jet. They can have the best of the best of everything. And that is true freedom, right? And look at the services they provide to the world. Now, whether people agree with that or not is a whole different story, but um, they are providing a lot of value to the world in return. They get a lot of freedom through that responsibility. Right. And um, that is, uh, that's, that's what most people can't handle is that responsibility. Yeah. Yep. Um, and actually, I want to go back to the to the bright light thing again real quick, because I actually watched a documentary where the, it was all about near death experiences. And they interviewed 500 people from all around the world, different races, religions. And what they found interesting is it was all the same experience. Didn't matter if you believed in God or Buddha or whatever. Yep. They all had the same experience. And as, to your point there, every single person came back and said, I'm no longer scared of dying. Yeah, it, it's it's interesting. Um people have asked what the experience is like and I can tell you that it's extremely peaceful and a lot of them said there's a lot of love a feeling of warmth yeah yeah it's very calming peaceful um, you really feel not to get crazy esoteric here but you really feel the extension of yourself within the universe if you will yeah. it's, it's really interesting well and you know again it might be esoteric but I, I do believe that that you know 
we were all star people. Isn't that the saying? We're all made out of star material, you know? And, <laughs> and, 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 you know, even though a lot of people are like, oh, what hippy dippy crap, I, I find it difficult, at least what I struggle with, and I know I talk to you a lot, a lot about this, is like when people are mean and rude and negative and, and all that good stuff towards other people, it doesn't make sense in my head because I don't understand why, you know, why that has to exist. Because at the end of the day, we really all are the same thing trying like and again it doesn't matter race or religion all people want the same thing a good life a, a, a good place to raise their kids a place where they can be happy and safe i mean it's it, it it's the same across all walks of life it, it really is and i can definitely um tell you that from personal experience i mean i've been all over the world i've been to 30 30 countries and all the stuff you hear about this country and that country and these people and that people is couldn't be further from the truth. That's fear mongering. Yeah, completely. And, um, you know, there are bad apples in every, every bushel, but, um, there are far more greater people out there than there are, uh, bad people in the people I've interacted with, with in some of the most impoverished countries on the planet, uh, are just amazing people, super happy. And then I come back here to America where we have a tremendous abundance and some of the most unhappy people on the planet. Yep. I hate to bring him up again, but I've been listening to a lot of Gary Vee lately. He's, he's telling some guy one day, he's like, you want to be a millionaire? He's like, I'll show you the millionaires I know. And every single one of them are miserable because <laughs> they, because they went after just solely for the money. Sure. They weren't there for, you know, to make the world a better place. They just, they got, they made their money to prove someone wrong or because their parents didn't believe in them, you know? So um, I think that's the other thing to keep in mind, too. The money's not the problem, but if you're doing it for the wrong reasons, which you also remind me about a lot, yeah. it's, it's, it's the mindset of, that you have behind making that money as to whether or not your happiness will follow. Absolutely. Yeah, you really want to make sure that the value that you're giving in exchange for uh, money, so to speak, is something that you enjoy uh, giving and if you're not being joyful and giving whatever it is, your talent, your value, your service, um, then you're not going to be happy with the money you make in the back end. Yeah. It, well, and I talk a lot about this on my other podcast, the around town Carroll County, which is, which is a very niche, uh, uh, audience there. If you're going after it and like, again, something you've helped me with, if you're, if you think you're being a nice person, but you're expecting something in return, then that's not being a nice person. No, it has to be completely. Um, it has to be from an actual, genuine place of wanting to be of service and yep. and, and build a better world. Yeah, that's what you're talking about is covert contracting. And yeah, you are you're doing something to get something in return, uh, which is toxic. Which is extremely toxic. And let's uh, let, let's talk about that a little bit. You. It, this is a very subconscious and insidious program that run in a lot of people. It's, it's a manipulation program and you're not doing the gesture, the giving of value, the sharing of talent because you truly want others to experience you and your gifts. You're doing it because somewhere along the line, you've learned that you can manipulate others to give you something that you're missing by giving out your your value or your service and that is uh incredibly toxic because yeah. you're you're not truly giving to give you are you're you're giving to get something back that's void from your life and you're never going to be fully uh in, enriched and in a, an actualized kind of person if you you keep doing that well i think a prime example of that because these videos infuriate me these guys that go out film themselves giving meals to homeless people and forcing that homeless person to sit on camera with them and talk about what a wonderful person they are for giving them food. It's like, man, if that's what you want to do with your time, do it without a camera in your face. I, that stuff really bothers me when I see that, you know? Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's a whole, a whole, not, yeah. <laughs> whole slippery slope we could go down. You know, again, if you want to give back to people, do so out of the kindness in your heart, not because you want likes and comments and, and followers. Um, yeah, unfortunately, that's the world we live in today is, uh, you know, everybody's, you know, putting their content out there. I mean, we're in a world of content creation and that's just yep. kind of part of it. You know, guilty any any <laughs> any other time, you know, you 
be, before the advent of the internet, you know, we would see that on the news and be like, oh, this person gave this or that. But now it's, people can go and, and show what they're doing. And, and some people you can tell it's really genuine. Yeah. And other people you can tell it's just like, all right, well, I'm just doing this for content and to get likes. Yeah, it's a shame. Well, let's talk a little bit. We talked about fears. And if you face your fears, that ultimately leads to living your dream life, whatever that is. For you, it's to travel the world and do crazy extreme sports that you've always liked doing. And again, I'm still flabbergasted that you're scared of falling because your whole life it was like, <laughs> how many broken legs and arms have you had your whole right, life? I, you know, it's just kind a of lot, a lot. <laughs> so, but but how does how does finally getting over your fears or at least facing them and realizing that you can take another step lead to living a dream life and a life that you're really happy about? Well, the first thing is to conquer a, a, a deep primal fear it really increases your confidence and empowerment. I think that's what most people are looking for is empowerment. They want to feel empowered. And if you look at our society, you look at our media streams, you look at the general consciousness of people, um, it's all about de-empowerment, if you will. Yeah. Um, it's not about empowering. And once you have that sensation of empowerment, which kind of leads to confidence, they're, they're kind of one in the same. Um, you really see what you're capable of. And that's another thing, right? People are terrified of what they're capable of. That's, that's a huge fear of somebody to realize how powerful they really are. Yeah. Um, that's why, that's why we reach out to, uh, deities, to groups, because we can't accept the responsibility that we have a tremendous amount of power in ourselves as individuals. So we want to put it outside of ourselves that, oh, well, it was a miracle that happened. Oh, this deity or this God or whatever, you know, it was a miracle. They made it happen. Well, not really. You actually made it happen. And that's a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people. They, they don't want to accept the fact that they're that powerful because if they do, then that means they're equally as powerful in, in a negative way, which is a hundred percent true. Yeah. Well, and I, I think this is along the same lines of stop asking for permission. I know I was like, before I started my other podcast, the around town Carroll County, and, and now this is the U S version. I, I kept asking people that didn't matter that had no control over my life, pretty much permission to start this thing. And I kept telling myself, well, if I don't get them to fund me, then I can't do it. And it wasn't until I actually had a conversation with one gentleman that infuriated me so much that I finally said, <laughs> screw it. I'm going to do it. I don't, and I actually told this guy to his face, I don't care whether you give me money or not. I'm going to make this big and successful. And you know, who cares whether I talk to you or not? I, that was a huge moment for me to realize, man, you know, not only was I making excuses as most people do, I don't have the money. I don't know the right people, but I, I kept asking people to tell me it was okay to do so. Yeah, man. I, for all of you listening, if there's something you want to do, don't ask for permission. Just go do it. Who cares? I, I... Yeah, a hundred percent. You you don't need permission from other people. Now, if you're using those people as mentors, as a sounding board um, to play ideas off of, that's that's totally fine. But if you're actually going and and using those types of people as a, a permission uh, board, if you will, then yeah, you're uh, you're definitely not going about it the right way. You have to make the decision on your own accord to go and take the action. Yeah. And, and it is, it is physical action, right? It starts in the mind, but then you have to take a physical action, whatever it may be, order equipment, uh, go to the bank, ask for a loan, fill out the loan paper. You have to take a physical action to move things forward. You know, if you want to build your business, uh, go on an adventure, whatever it may be. Well, and I've, I've made the comment before on the other podcast, you know, I think we have superpowers and the superpower is, is, is choice. Absolutely. So, you know, whether something awful happened in your childhood, sexually, mentally abused, anything like that, at the end of the day, as horrible as that is, you have a choice. Do I play victim or do I go live the life I want to live regardless of all that and try to improve other people's lives? Absolutely. Yep. And, and the, the other thing, um, you know, kind of back to what we were talking about that, that de-empowerment, the, the victim mentality is strong in America. Yeah. yeah People love to be the victim. I mean, it's unbelievable. And, you know, now we have victim shaming. It's like, come on. Um, you know, victim mentality is extremely toxic and it holds people down. It de-empowers them. 
instead of the opposite, which is where we should all be heading. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I, again, I can, you know, that's one reason for this podcasting is not, I not only do I want to show people that instead of working that job, you hate every single day that you can actually go work for yourself and make now, you know, a huge portion of that is, is learning how to deal with money and learning how to not buy stupid crap. You don't need to impress yeah. people you don't care about. Yep. Uh, that's a huge portion of that. But you know, again, it, it all leads back to that dream life and it has, it starts with you taking control of your own life. It, it totally does. Right. And, in a a simple exercise right that people could do right now in this very moment is is it taking an action right and this is kind of getting into abundance and moving toward your dream life look around the space that you're in currently and find something that's been bugging you that you want to throw away and go throw it away it doesn't matter what it is just get rid of it because everybody's got something like well, I'm holding on to this for whatever reason. No, you're you're not. Just get rid of it. And this is what stalls people. This is these these are the excuses people use to move forward to clean out the cut, clutter of their past life. Um, get rid of it. You know, when I when I am if moved out to uh, Los Angeles, I filled a garbage dumpster of past history of junk that I don't know why I was keeping it. I threw it out. When I threw it, when I when I saw that I filled this little garbage dumpster of junk that I was keeping. I'm like, why in the world would I ever keep this stuff? Yeah. And it's just holding on to the past, which we love to do. And once you get rid of all that stuff and, and move into your new life, it's like, wow, this is amazing. You feel so much more free and there's not all these mental anchors um, in the form of physical objects that hold you back to your past life. You're free to move forward. You're cutting the weights, right? The balloon itself is lifting higher and higher. And so you can see more over the horizon than, than you could in the past because you were so weighted down with all this other garbage. Yeah, Kelly's, uh, my wife Kelly, her father says a lot, physical clutter is mental clutter. It's the same thing. Totally. And, and I always think of Fight Club, one of my favorite movies, and one of my favorite lines from that movie, the things you own end up owning you. They do. And, and I, same thing as you. I'm, I've moved a lot in my life. And every time I moved, I would throw tons and tons of stuff out that just didn't mean now I was an idiot. And I went and rebought it all every time. <laughs> so that's been a hard lesson. And even, you know, Kelly and I went through the house the other day because we were expecting the kid. And uh, we wanted to go through and gut the house as much as possible. And even though I've, even though I've been through the process several times, it's still very hard to look at some stuff and be like, okay, I'm going to get rid of this. But what I have found funny and interesting each and every time I've done it, the next day you don't even care or remember that what you even threw out, it doesn't even matter. But they, it's funny how your brain will sit there and tell you, well, maybe I do want to hold on to this. Well, and I had to actually force my hand and just keep throwing stuff away. And, and again, it's funny how like the next day I was like, I don't even remember what I threw out because it doesn't matter. Yep. And that's a perfect simple example of how you start to train your ego because your ego is your your uh, comfort zone basically right that it it goes out of its way to keep you comfortable and safe and it is responsible for a small life in my opinion if you do not train it to live and understand uh, a bigger life think of your ego as a little pet you need to train it to live a bigger life so that it doesn't sabotage you, doesn't distract you, doesn't hold you back, and you understand how it operates and that way you can control it. And so ego is tying comfort to all those objects that you're throwing away and you need to eradicate those objects so that it can learn to live without them. And then now it's expanded to a new place that it's, you know, it's out of its own comfort zone and then you can move Uh, onward and upward. Hey, Adam Stoltz here. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. We truly appreciate your support. You know, video shoots should be fun and rewarding for you and your team. Should be an experience worth bragging about. And so when you work with me, you can rest assured that you will have a wonderful time while we create excellent content to share with your audience. I'm here to listen to your needs, advise you on the best approach, and execute on a level unparalleled by most. Your business and the story you're telling is more important than ever. So call or email today and find out why not all video is created equally.
and again, I'm not a doctor, neither is Dave. So if you need help, please find the right help. But uh, to me, ego also leads to the depression. I mean, if it's trying to keep you safe and comfy, that safe and comfiness is why you're depressed. I, you know, uh, that took me a long time of working with you to realize is like, I, I was sad and upset because I was scared to do anything with my life. And yeah. it wasn't until, as we've talked about, moving the needle forward, work, making my own company, starting this podcast, doing things I actually wanted to do that I was scared of feedback and people telling me I sucked or I was, you know, it's like, I don't even care about that stuff anymore. It's, you know, and, and to me, all this depression that seems rampant now, get off your ass, go yeah. do something, um, do what you've always wanted to do, because I can assure you, once you accomplish it, you'll be like, what was I upset and sad about? Every, every client that reaches the place that they want to reach, you know, when, when we work with them is they're just like, I can't even, they can't even recognize their past life. I actually have to remind them most of the time yeah. because, uh, they don't do a simple exercise, which I'd like people to do, which is, a, a compare and contrast like every quarter where, where was I at the beginning of this quarter? Where am I in now? And how much has my life changed? And unless you do a compare and contrast at least a quarter or maybe even half every half a year, you're, you're never going to realize consciously how far you've come and what you've overcome to, to be where you are because we're with ourselves 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We are not aware of our own changes. Right. And so we need to always have a compare and contrast mechanism so that we understand our own growth. Well, and you even you even brought up to me the other day. You're like, you 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 made me do that because you're like, look, when you first came to me, living with mom and dad, hated every job I ever had, <laughs> I, not a girl to speak of in my life. I now run my own company. I'm married, kid on the way. You know, it's yeah. it's a pretty stark contrast from where I started. Um, and uh, you know, again, anyone out there listening, if 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 you're sitting there and you just you, you're thinking, man, this is not the life I want. Look up Dave, look up, look, and there's plenty of resources online too. Gary Vee's a good one, Impact Theory, all those guys. Uh, this stuff is where I do feel the world is headed, and especially America. Uh, I think people were sick of the the victim and the, the you know, I, I actually think you're seeing it now in the job market where people can't find people to work. I don't think it's that people are lazy. I think people have realized, man, with the internet, I don't have to work this crappy job. Yep. I don't have to do this. And I think, I think especially the younger generation fully gets that it's the older generation that's mad about it. Cause they don't understand what's happening. But the younger generation's like, why am I going to go wait tables for you when I can make a million dollars talking about this video game I play? Yeah. Or just being an a, a e athlete, right? Right. You know, competing globally for millions of dollars to play video games. How many times did mom and dad yell at us when we were little, stop <laughs> playing those darn video games. And yeah. And look, these kids are making $50 million for winning a tournament now. Yeah. It's insane. And then, you know, just aside from the e-athletes themselves, let's look at just the promoters that put those events on, how much money they're making yeah. to put people in the seats to watch these athletes play. It's crazy. Yeah, who I know I still struggle with it, I'll admit, watching people play video games. But, man, it's a huge thing now. It's massive. I, you know. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it goes back. You know, it's no different, actually, than, like, going to, like, a breakdance competition or – uh, skateboarding skate, for you skateboarding competition yeah. or people people that they don't skate but they love watching it right people that don't play video games that well but they love watching people that do it it's no different it's just uh you know it's just digital format of sports now and it's amazing well i just remember mom and dad yelling at you about skateboarding go get a job that skateboarding doesn't mean anything and here tony hawk and all of them are making millions of dollars going yeah. out riding a, a, a piece of wood with some wheels on it absolutely and tony <laughs> made a lot of his money in video games well true but he still made a plenty of money skateboarding too <laughs> yeah yeah um so uh, it's pretty popular nowadays especially if you get into the uh personal enrichment stuff but um i think it's one that most people really need to get through their heads the world is abundant and until you realize that there is no wealth creation because I know when I started, when I started my business, my first thought was, there's five other people that do what I do. How can I dare find money? And then that's when my wife, Kelly, looked at me and laughed at me. And she's like, there's 500 photographers in this area, and I managed to make money. So, again, the world's abundant. And until you realize that, you're going to be stuck where you are. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if you're, if you're sitting in a job that you hate, um, you need to take an action. You know, find what value you can deliver to the world. And... 
with the advent of the internet, I mean, we're living in a time where anything, literally anything can be sold for money on the internet. Um, people are offering all kinds of, you know, uh, workshops and teachings and God knows what else on the internet. Yeah. And, and they're making a very good living, um, because now you have access to, you know, instead of like 10,000 people in your little town to 8 billion people or 8 billion people globally. Yeah. And, and it's, uh, it's really changed the game. So figure out what you're good at, figure out what value you can provide. Um, you know, if people, if you, if you don't understand what talents you have or what, um, what, uh, value you have, think about what people always ask you, you know, what are people always coming to you, uh, uh, for advice for and things like that. Perfect example of this, right. Is, uh, this guy who started his uh, YouTube channel. Um, it was, I think it's called like, Hey dad, how do I? And it's this dad who created a YouTube channel for kids who didn't have a father hey, to, yep. to ask, ask them or he, he is basically like showing quote unquote, his virtual kids, you know, how do you change a light bulb? How do you plunge a toilet? How do you fix this creaky latch on your door? Like, so all these things that a dad would do, um, in, in, if you're a, a a kid or an adult even that's grown up without a father and don't and, and didn't have access to somebody like that. So he's created his YouTube channel and you can go and watch all these videos about how he does things and, and things that like a dad would do for the family, for the kids or whatever. And that, that YouTube channel got something like 200,000 subscribers in a week. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And you know, he's not monetizing it. He's just doing it cause he likes to do it. But you know, somewhere along the way, somebody's going to come and help him monetize that. Well, and to to that point specifically, um, my marketing guy that I'm I'm trying to start a marketing podcast with out of New York, he goes, Adam, you have to understand, there are podcasts now that review podcasts. Yep. I mean, you can literally make money and find an audience about anything. Uh, and I, again, I hate to bring him up again, but I listened to Gary Vee the other day say he's like, in 1975, there was an excuse about time and money. But with the invention of the internet, he's like, you can literally build a business while you're laying in bed about to go to sleep on your phone. He's like, there's no excuse anymore. No, there's not. There's zero, zero, zero excuses these days. It's so easy. And um, <laughs> you just need to take the action. It's, it's as simple as that. Uh, somebody that's not willing to take the action isn't. Uh, you know, I, I always have to say, like, are you willing and are you able? Right? Are you willing to take the action? If so, yes, great. Um, are you physically able to? Yeah, okay, great. Well, then you're you're well on your way. But if you're not willing to do anything, you're not able to take an action, you're going to be stuck. Yeah, you're going to be stuck working that job you hate. Yeah. And unfortunately, some people just can't get past that because there's some really deep-seated traumas, fears, frustrations, um, one of the things that you you mentioned earlier was being basically being seen being said that being told that you know you were wrong or this is stupid or how could you do that um that right there is a big hold back for a lot of people oh yeah a tremendous amount of people are held back because they don't want to be judged right they don't want to have any sense of that uh, abandonment from the tribe you got to get over it yeah, we do. And actually, uh, I, I won't say her name, but I, I, a fr an old friend of mine the other day, she does wonderful portraits. And I asked her, I'm like, why aren't you on social media? She's like, I just don't want to hear people tell me I suck. And I'm like, look, because she doesn't want to go get it. She wants to have her art be her life. And it's like, well, look, until you get over that, I'm assuring you right now, yeah. you will not get to where you want to go. Because I, I told her the same thing with my videos that I create. I was worried somebody was going to be like, you're awful. You suck. This is dumb. I told her not once has that happened. And if it did at this point, I don't really care because I know my talents. I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm proud of. And at the end of the day, whatever, because again, there's a million more people out there that do way better videos than me that have way better equipment and bigger companies. And, and that's fine. That's where they are. And that's the other thing I think people need to realize too. Being I think this gets into gratitude a little bit. Being content, maybe not content is the right word, but being happy with where you are and what you have at the current moment. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is a, that's a great start for, you know, understanding gratitude. Um, 
you know, kind of one of the other things I wanted to say is that we're, we're more fearful of our imagination and it is more fearful mm-hmm. than the actual reality of when we go and do something. I like so it. if, you know, if you're sitting there imagining how awful it's going to be, if somebody says something to you or puts you down or comes after you for, um, whatever reason that they dislike what you're doing, uh, trust me, it's not going to be nearly as bad as it is what, as it will be in, in real life. Um, yeah. And and most of the time that stuff just never happens. Like you said. Right. And you have to realize if your brain can imagine the horrible thing, I mean, Kelly even catches me on this and has to remind me if your brain can sit there and focus on all the bad things, if you can train it to focus on the good things and the positive things, it's funny how the rest of the world just kind of opens up. Yep. Uh, you had mentioned choice earlier, choice. You have two choices in every situation, right? You can perpetually spiral up by choice or you can perpetually spiral down by choice. And each decision that you make is a decision of choice and you either choose the positive or you choose the negative yeah. and, and you're going to go in that direction. I forget who said it, but they said every morning when you wake up, you have to decide, do I live in a hostile universe or do I live in a loving universe? Yeah. And what you pick at that moment is how the rest of your day is going to go. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and even again, and that's where it gets tricky because, I mean, say you chose a loving uh, universe and then you go out and get run over by a car and break a leg or something that you could instantly be like, oh, that's hostile. But there again lies choice. You know, was it really hostile or was just something just happened and it's still a loving place because the EMS came and saved you then and the doctor took care of you? You know, it's it's, it's all I think perspective is the word I'm looking for. Perspective is everything perspective and reframing, right? You know, if that happened in America, you'd have the best medical care. You'd be life flighted somewhere If that happened in some other country. You know, you may be having your, you may have your leg amputated, right? right? And you may, may even die because of infection in the hospital or wherever you are. Um, again, I, you know, I've seen some emergency services in some pretty, some pretty, uh, impoverished nations and it's terrifying. It really is. But, yeah. um, yeah, we're, we're, we're very, very, very lucky here in America. Extremely lucky. And I realized that when I went to visit our cousin in France, and after two weeks of being in France, I couldn't wait to land back in America. <laughs> and not that France was a horror. I mean, France was a beautiful country and, and fantastic food and lovely people. But, well, I, I'll just say it showed me how spoiled we are here. Convenience. <sighs> Convenience is a huge thing in America. Yeah. Like, when we were walking down the streets of France, and it's like, it's... 1.30 on a weekday, what do you mean you're not open? And their signs would be like, ah, out to lunch, drinking wine, don't care. Yeah. And then you come to here, it's like you go to a store, they're open. It's guaranteed to be. Yep. Uh, so that that was eye-opening for me too. And, I, you know, again, I think if you haven't traveled or gotten out of the country, do so. It'll open your eyes to how spoiled we are here uh, yeah. and and how fortunate you are to, to live here. Absolutely. It's a, it's an eye opening experience, extremely educational, you know, unfortunately, uh, a lot of Americans do not travel and, um, well, cause you're told by the, every media outlet, all oh, this country, you're going to get killed the second you land, you know, you'll be, <laughs> you'll be thrown in jail and called a terrorist. And it's like, I, no, that's, that's not how it works at all. No, no. I can't tell you how many quote unquote level four countries that I've been to, um, that the state department says, do not travel there. I'm like, go there and it's fine. You know, some are a little sketchy, but, uh, it's fine. Well, and I think the other part of that too is, uh, don't be a loud, obnoxious American when you travel, be a, be a (laughs) grateful, uh, kind and caring person when you travel. Yeah. Uh, Just remember you are representing your own country when you travel. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Act with some class. Um, well, let's talk about gratitude because I know when I, I, I can even every once in a while when I hit a rough spot, Kelly's like gratitude go to that journal write down what are you thankful for yeah and uh how does gratitude really lead to everything else we talked about the abundance the living your dream life and facing your fears well gratitude I think is the is the uh cherry on top right I don't think it 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 can lead to uh, a much better lifestyle if you practice it but I think once you've achieved some things, you need to look back and show your gratitude or appreciate uh, with gratitude of what what you've overcome yourself personally first. And then the material things are, are second. Those are always second. You need to look at 
the obstacles you've overcome as a human being first and foremost, and then appreciate all the physical items or the materialistic type items or experiences that you've had because of your ability to overcome your own fears and fight through uh, all the punches that are coming at you because you chose to step out of the norm. You chose to take action and, and move forward toward the dream life that you want to live. Well, and that's one thing you have to remind me of. Like, so if you're that person sitting there on your couch, watching TV every night, going, ready to get going to go into that job that you can't stand. If the next day you actually get your butt off the couch and go move one step closer to what you actually want to do, celebrate that. Pat, pat yourself on the back. Yeah, absolutely. Um, perfect example is a, a mentor that, uh, that I've worked with. Um, his name's David Nagel. He's amazing. He started, well, he was working on a dock as a forklift driver, making $20,000 a year. And he was just pissed off, angry, just a miserable human being. And he wanted to make, he was living on food stamps and like barely feeding his family and all this stuff. He's, he's a multi, multi-millionaire now. Um, and he, it all started, and he tells this story over and over again, it all started with his gratitude. He, he said, I'm going to treat people with respect. He's going to, I'm going to do my job with the best of my abilities. And I'm going to be grateful that I have a job. And he had learned that through, I don't know, some audio tape he was listening to way back in the day. And, uh, he went into the work the next day and applied those three, uh, practices. And he did that day after day, after day, after day, after day. And by the end of the year, he had moved himself within the company from $20,000 a year as a forklift driver to 60,000 just within a couple of months by practicing that because the management saw a change in him and they moved him into an actual sales position. And then he went from $60,000 a year to $60,000 a month. Wow. Is, would you, would you think this would be fair to say that that gratitude almost equals your attitude? Because that change they saw in him was that he wasn't an angry, pissed off prick anymore, right? <laughs> exactly. Right. I mean, because I know I was guilty of that. I mean, when, I, when, when you think the whole world's against you and everything's happening to you. It, well, that's like, what you're going to get. That's, that's what, what you're going to experience. That's exactly what you're going to get because yeah. that's what you're looking for and that's what you expect. So yeah. to me, gratitude and attitude, no wonder they saw a change in him. Yeah. Uh, it, it's amazing what you can do to shift your your subconscious, um, and just even your conscious, uh, experience that you're having every day at a job you dislike. And, um, once you start doing that and you're doing it for yourself because you really want to change, the change is coming. You yeah. just need a little bit of patience. Well, and, and this might be a little off topic, but I wrote it down because as we were talking about gratitude and, and I, cause I think this is important how you treat others, because at the end of the day, one thing I had to learn is you can't do it by yourself. Even though as much as I wanted to, I wanted to make everything happen by myself. You're going to find out you cannot, you will fail. But the only way you get help and people giving of their time is, is how you treat other people. Absolutely. You, you can't achieve anything by yourself. You always, everything that you want comes through other people, right? We can't sit here and do this podcast without somebody that that went and created all this equipment for us. Right. Yeah. Um, I can't sit here and talk to you without you creating the podcast and me being a guest on it. Right. So, um, through other people, we're sitting here doing this and now we're sharing to other people and those people will hopefully learn from us and through us we'll share with other people. And that's, that's the way it works. And that's the same with, with money as well. Um, not to go off topic, but, um, you know, I just wanted to share that I had, I'd coached some financial services people and one of the sales reps, she had a real trouble, a real, really difficult time asking people for money, um, because she felt guilty for it because she felt like she was taking. And I said, no, that's not the way it works. I said, so when you're getting someone's retirement to invest for them and you're, or you're uh, asking them to invest with you, what are you doing? You're putting it in the markets. What do the markets do? Well, you're buying a piece of that company. Well, that money that's going into the markets is going to help a company build a piece of, 
uh, equipment that grades the land that you're going to build your house on that that also um, requires a construction worker to come in and it becomes this whole cycle of money that flows around so why would you be guilty of helping the economy move forward and providing jobs for everybody else by all you're doing is sitting here in the office asking for money. I know that was my biggest problem when I started my business. I remember telling you, you're like, what do you hate? What's the one thing you struggle with? I'm like, I hate sending invoices and asking for money. And now it's to the point now I've charged more than I have ever charged my entire life. And the people that say that's too expensive, are going, that's nice. Find someone else. I, I you know, I, yeah, cause, well, well, cause you have to, like, that's another thing. If you start your own business and I, this is what I was telling my, my portrait artist friend, until you believe that you're worth it, no one else will. Absolutely. You, you have to understand what you're worth. You have to understand how much time and energy you've put in perfecting your craft or service or value. Um, and we all know that the best of the best costs. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason they're the best. There's a reason they're the most talked about. They provide the most value. They provide the most accurate service. They provide uh, the most detailed service, etc. And, and you pay for that. And, and those people that you're paying top dollar to um, have earned it because they have the experience. Yeah. And you don't get that experience without facing your fears and getting off your butt and going and doing something. Exactly. <laughs> Just in case you haven't been paying attention up to this point. <laughs> um, well, anything else that you think we should cover here before we sign off? Um, Cause that is definitely a lot. And again, uh, you know, I'll say but we are not the first people to talk about this. I mean, if you want to change your life, there are literally millions of people talking about this stuff now. Uh, we just hope that maybe you got a little something different out of, of listening to us talk about it. But um, really, yeah, I, the reason I wanted to start this podcast again, if, if I can be one more person singing that, hey, you don't have to work that job you hate, please, dear God, listen to us. Um, Everything's better right over I, I believe uh, someone you know would put it this way. Everything you want is on the other side of fear. Yeah, yeah. We had said, we had said that at the beginning of the podcast, yeah. and uh, it's true. Um, as soon as you face that fear, um, and you're going to run into this thing called the terror barrier, right? The closer you get to actually achieving your goal that you've been wanting to achieve, the more things are going to go wrong, the more things are going to fight you, the more you're going to doubt yourself, the more uh, you're going to bring trouble into your life because the, what is that? That is your ego now fighting you, try to keep you in this comfortable little spot. And remember, like we said before, you got to train your little ego to go and fight through that stuff. And as soon as everything seems like it's going to fail and you keep pushing forward, moving to that next level, it all miraculously drops away in a split second and yeah. then boom, you're at the next level. Yeah. My artist friend, I told her today, I said, look, you're going to have days where you wake up and you're like, there's no way this is going to happen and you're going to want to quit. I was like, you have to push through those days because the only way you can fail is to just stop trying. Yeah. Well, that's the only way anybody fails is they just stop. Right. Yep. So if you're out there trying to get out of that job, like Dave just said, there's going to be some really crappy days where your little ego tells you, you know, this is all for nothing, but don't listen to it because that means you're close. Keep pushing. Yep. <laughs> very, very close. I mean, I know it took me almost three years to get my business up and running to where I actually had an income. Uh, and I can't tell you how many times I wanted to quit and go back to finding that safe job, quote unquote, safe job because it would pay me. Um, but again, another great talk, if you can listen to Jim Carrey's uh, commencement speech, he talks about his father was a fantastic comedian and uh he was so scared of failing at it that he went and became an accountant and yeah. what his father found out was that he eventually got laid off from that job and jim carrey says what i learned from that moment is you can fail at what you don't want so you might as well take an opportunity on something you do absolutely a hundred percent and you know what does job stand for just ever broke right you're not controlling your income you have no control over it you're yeah. at the mercy but but people have been trained to think that the job is the safe place it's not you have no control over what you earn you are trading your time for dollars and when you run your own business you are actually leveraging your time for dollars and you have control over how much money you make 
Yeah. And, and here's the thing. You might be thinking, well, I only work 40 hours now. If I work for myself, I have to work 80. And that may be true, but here's the thing. You'll be happy to work that 80 because it's for you Absolutely. and not someone else. Yep. <laughs> and that's why I start this podcast off and my other ones too, you know, learn how to build your, you know, learn how to build a company and live out your own dream instead of being paid to live, build someone else's. Cause that's all you're doing. Working for someone else is making someone else's dream come true. Uh, and that doesn't lead anywhere good. <laughs> No. And now there's some people that very much like that lifestyle. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. True. Um, this is, you know, this podcast is not for those people. Those people are happy doing what they're doing. Um, and, and they're very good at what they do. Um, this podcast is for somebody who's is unhappy at their J-O-B, just ever broke job. Um, this is for, for people that want to get out there and do stuff and uh, need a little kick in the pants occasionally to uh, move to that next level. So those folks are here listening, I'm sure. Good, good. Well, before we sign off, uh, where can people find you and learn a little more about you and uh, find out how to reach out to you if they should choose? Uh, I'm on all the social media platforms, uh, just Dave Stoltz. And then you can check out my website, uh, davestoltz.net. Cool. All right. Well, for all of you uh, listening out there, uh, be sure to check out my brother Dave. Uh, good stuff. He's helped me get my business to where it is uh, and my life to where it is. Um, and uh, be sure to like, subscribe, listen, leave a five-star review. And as we always sign off, uh, please take care, be good to one another, and we'll see you next time on Around Town. <laughs>